What's up, everybody? Scott Hogan coming at you. And as always, it's another exciting day. We have FS Golf update to the app. So really, really excited about that. Got the iPad all ready to roll and share with you a little bit about the findings. So it's a really cool update because we have a new feature in there that is going to be working with some of the weather conditions so really cool to try it out before we get to that again if you like the videos make sure you click that subscribe button down below and give the video a thumbs up that really does help and if you need to purchase a mevo plus or mevo or any of the launch monitors check the links down below uh, you can get discounts this week for the masters if you're looking for the regular mevo the mini mevo that is 65 dollars off through sunday so if you're looking for that make sure you check that out down below in the links so with that said we're going to get into this is version 3.3.0 i don't know why i said dot in the last one but there we go 3.3.0 so one note if you were having an issue trying to get this to update i know i was looking for it i got the email yesterday i did have to just go search fs golf in the app store to get to where it would say update it wasn't saying it in my auto updates part and then when i searched the app it would pop up so if you're not getting it just go search for it in the app store it should pop up for you now what is the main things that we're looking for with this app? So with the updates, we had a couple of user interface things and some of the basic things. Um, there's a report that it's actually gonna be a big spin helper, but uh, I'm gonna try that out with a driver a little bit later, see what we get there. And the one I wanna talk about right now is this new weather interface that you can use indoors. So this is really cool. I saw this on the X3 a couple weeks ago when they were here, when FlightScope was here. I thought this was a really cool practice tool where what you can do is actually get the real time weather conditions from outside and you're able to put those in for humidity, your altitude, temperature, the wind direction and the wind strength, which is really, really cool. So. When you, you first start up the app, what you're gonna do is you're going to just go in and start a normal session. When you do that, what you're gonna see is there's now a local weather conditions tab. When you click that, it's going to look for the local weather conditions that you have around you or the last time it was able to get that. You are gonna need internet to do that. And if you're using a non-cellular cellular iPad, you can just connect to the internet before you go and connect to your, your device and get an update and you'll get the most recent conditions then until you switch back over to your device. Or I'll show you in another video how there's a way that you can actually connect, use your phone to be able to get the internet and use that for your device. So that one will show you a little bit because there's a little bit to go into that with that. But anyway really cool stuff you get your weather conditions and then you go from there now you do have the option to turn this off and be able to just have it be at auto sea level and all that stuff so that's something if you're not looking to have those conditions at all times uh, and just kind of see what your standard yardages and stuff that might be something you're looking for now when we go to do this one little note is if you're not connected to the internet it's going to tell you that hey you're not able to get the most recent updated conditions so what you can do is actually plug those in yourself i find this interesting because you can't do that if you're connected to the wi-fi if you are connected to the internet where it can get the updated weather conditions it will not let you manually put those in so i think that's a little bit interesting because i think it would be cool to be able to say hey i want to work on this wind condition this wind condition this wind condition so i think that's something that would be interesting now, when you do use the conditions and the Wi-Fi that are currently going on, it just doesn't let you do that. Not sure if that'll get updated or if you're just gonna have to turn your internet off and then set them yourself. So that's just one little note as you're going through. As far as performing, what you gotta do when you're setting the wind, you can also turn on that wind influence, say, hey, I want the wind to influence my shots. When you do that, you're gonna have to point the direction you're hitting. Now, when you're indoors, and if you're using the outside conditions, it's going to know, hey, the wind's blowing whatever direction. So when I did mine, we pointed just in the regular direction. I saw my yardages were going pretty short. We had about an eight mile an hour wind. So what did we do? We took it outside. I tested the wind direction, see if it actually read the right wind, wind direction. And it did. It, we were definitely hitting into the wind going that direction. So we came back into the space and I just flipped around. I turned the iPad when I was setting this up. So I pointed the other direction when I set my hitting direction 
and now it read as if I was hitting downwind. So you can get around that a little bit. That's kind of cool because it's very easy. You can hit this button in the top left part of the screen that's gonna turn on and off the wind. So every time you turn it off and then turn it back on, you are gonna have to set the direction. So you could easily just say, hey, I wanna hit with a crosswind now. I wanna hit with a crosswind the other way. I wanna hit with a downwind into the wind. That's something that we saw. So really cool, really interesting features there. And again, you'd have to mess with it. I didn't try it out as I found out after the fact with the being able to set your own conditions, but being able to figure out the direction that the wind is playing as you're going, I think that's gonna be something you have to mess with to figure that out because I'm not exactly sure how it orients. Maybe somebody that's better with 360 degree orientation would know uh, how that all works as far as degrees. So anyway, that was pretty cool. Now, as far as performance, performance, I did just hit a few seven irons to get going and just test it out. And I did see it seemed to make sense when you're hitting into the wind, the ball got knocked down a good, you know, probably 10 to 15 yards and going downwind, I got helped out about eight, seven, eight, nine yards, which is very true. You do get hurt more by a into the wind shot than you get helped by a downwind shot. I think that's really cool and something that people don't ever understand. And when I talk with players, they don't realize, hey, I'm going to hit the ball into the wind. That is, I need to take like a club or two clubs more. They think they can just like punch a normal club and that's gonna work and, and it never does. But having the ability to kind of work with those situations that would be pretty cool it'd be cool too when we get a really interesting day outside being able to just use that setting and get the weather that's currently going on outside and be like all right you know what that is like what would it be like playing in that condition right now what would that be like I think that's something that could help people kind of put together two and two between conditions outside and what they're seeing numbers wise and maybe help them take it better onto the golf course. So I thought that was pretty cool too. So that's the, the update. You know, again, there is some rumors that this was going to be a spin update as well. However, that wasn't in the official release, but I'm going to try it out anyway in a later video. I'll report back on that. We'll get a driver and everything which is what i've been curious about as far as numbers so we'll see what's going on with that and see if that has changed but right now just wanted to cover this weather update really cool really fun feature not sure i'd use it all the time but something I'm definitely going to be incorporating into teaching and helping people learn about what goes on when they're playing on the golf course. That's something I've always said is when you're working in a simulator, you're never able to get a feel for the conditions outside as good as you can when you actually just go do it. This is definitely starting to close that gap, even though there's still a few minor things I would say wouldn't help you actually be able to perform better in windy conditions or being in high altitude conditions when you actually go out on the golf course. So again, bridges the gap, but you still have to practice in those conditions. But overall, hey, really cool flight scope taking this unit again to another level, I think, and making it really, really fun, something that we can always be doing differently. And I love that. And that's what I love about flight scope in general and what they've been doing with all their units since I've been a customer. So great job, flight scope. Excited to see what else you got coming with it. And again, if you have any questions, please shoot them my way and leave some comments down below. If you've tried it out, what do you think of the new features? And what have you figured out as you've been testing all of them out going through all this? So Thanks everybody for watching. Again, if you liked the video, click that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and we will see you in the next one. Peace.